Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. So I'm a Necron Cryptic, so what? Part number 12. 1686 years since Ishka's first awakening. Be high transmograi for Ishka, Cryptic of the Vuklet dynasty. Having just captured standing Ferak Nefertakina within a tesseract labyrinth. I had finally. After 1000. 686 years. Assumed ownership of my body once more. And that detestable thought form had retreated deep within my neural pathways. Taking in a breath, I scoop up the labyrinth. Stowing away the cube into my dimensional pocket. There is much to do, and so little time to do so. Looking around at the collection of mangled constructs strewn around the ground. The wreckage of the Scorpec Lord's Rampage. These were Scorpioids. Constructs I had designed during my last years of the war. It had been surreal. That is. It had been surreal to see my own floor designs corrected and mass produced throughout the empire. Taking a knee I stared into the blue ocular lenses of the constructs. You have cleanup duty to attend to. The swarm of canoptic constructs begin to tide over every inch of the floor, repairing the groundwork of the chamber or quickly working to disassemble the desolated piles of scorpioids remains. I did not concern myself further with them. Instead I focused my attention to the wide hole in the ceiling which granted me access to this hidden chamber. I could see a golden swarming, teeming masses of thousands of constructs making their way down the tunnel. No doubt trying to protect me from the threat that first Scythegak had warned them against. Raising a hand to the tunnel, I cleared my vocal actuator. With a superfluous inhale, I let out a bellowing command that peaked the limits of my vocal capabilities. Freeze all motor functions. The oncoming mass ceased their hurried march almost all simultaneously. Speaking softly now that the noise of a million skittering limbs had stopped. I uttered a low order. Return to previously assigned chambers. Commence primary cleaning directive. The order was transmitted along to every construct within the tunnel and to the many more beyond my reach. They began the march back up the tunnel and left me. My mind was back at peace without their droning. I could finally turn my attention to the archive. Striding on it I moved past the simple historical records and made my way to the heart of the archive. A large data crystal repository shaped into a hexagonal prism holding thick data scrolls the same circumference of my own arm. These were unusually dense, but this was to be expected. Casting a quick scree over the collection of data scrolls, I gave cursory inspection onto the subject matter of each scroll. Schematics for several fighter craft, rad weapons, studies deep into theories on alchemy. I found the research into alchemy would be useful. Much of its concepts focused on the branch of geomancy and transmogrification which was my area of expertise. I scooped up four data scrolls. Theorems on alchemical matters and transmogrification equations, schematics for large radiation weapons, celestial encapsulation with theoretic designs for an aeonic orb, and lastly, the hecatic encryption of glyphs. Pocketing the scrolls, I left the archives. Calling forth the trans-dimensional glyphs of my ancestors the ziggurat sealed itself up. The opening now sealed up by a solid black wall. No indication of entrance was present. By the looks of the chamber, they had managed to clean up the rough shape it was in. Very good was all I could think in response. I called on to two of these large constructs. And gave them the order to lift me out of this tunnel. They complied without issue. As undignified as a method of transport as this was, it was the only way to ascend. I had been outside of the tomb's translocation radius and the Technomanrides archive chamber had been guarded from any instant transmission into its halls. The climb up took an uncomfortably long time before I reached transmission range and could leave. Before I transmitted myself away I purged all data of this venture from these constructs and had them marked for reassembly. They compiled without issue. Now free with this knowledge secured I had my form transmitted elsewhere. Translated into the chamber containing the Eternity Gate. 
The gate had been constructed by my counterpart. I cannot find any flaws in its construction. But then again, any miscalculations when it comes to an eternity gate could prove cataclysmic. This, human thought form was most troubling. Calling forth the hakatic glyph of activation, the gate let out a sour reverberation as the roiling energies popped a swirling vortex. The folded space of the portal began to stabilize into a piercing green spiral. Glyphs along the length of the portal began to flash green indicating a connection to its sister gate. Stepping into the gate, I headed into the Solemnace galleries. Sanit popped into being beside me soon after. What would you be looking for Lord Ishka he asked. I chuckled internally, all these honorifics now thanks to the thought form's actions these last millennia. I am looking into an artifact, one who may have been referenced in either the written format or digitally transcribed within the archives. I answered. Can you assist me in this matter, Sanat? The old cryptic let out a rather pleased chime into his voice. But of course Lord Ishka, I am sure we may find it. The dimensionalist was all too keen to assist me in this academic venture. He flashed several hand gestures which seemed to summon up hecatic glyphs into the air. The faint wobbling distortion echo as a death marks departure from a hyperspace oubliette rung out. In but a brief moment a flash of colors passed over us as we were translated into a sizable Athenaeum. An archive that easily expanded out for several leagues, shelves made from every conceivable material with writing materials in hundreds of formats. I couldn't help but gawk at one shelf which seemed to be entirely comprised of wraith bone, with stylized engravings of what seemed to be Azure irony in epic battle around every edge of the shelf. I held my disgust as I was well aware of the perversions that Trazin hid within these galleries. This is certainly, quite the collection sanit. I'm sure we will be able to find what I'm looking for here. I noted. Sanit cleared his throat superfluously. And if I may ask my lord. What is it that we are looking for? Turning to face the old cryptic, I spoke the name of the artifact. The Dark Throne. And any references to a trionic activator. Sanit nodded. I'll begin my search soon lord, but I must ask. What exactly is this device? I stroked my chin thinking on it for a moment. Finally after a few minutes of silence I spoke up. It is a powerful device capable of suppressing Empyrean energies. Sanit nodded. That was if it truly existed, this, human thought form had considered looking into this matter on many occasions. But he banished the idea just as often. Something regarding canonicity. His simulations or more accurately as it was called in his tongue, video games were considered to be of dubious canon. Meaning it was unclear if this dark throne truly existed within my universe. A fact that bothered me almost as much as the thought form considering my reality was nothing more than a fictitious setting. I ended that line of thinking and returned to the matter at hand. I spoke up once more. Include any maps, stories, theatrical performances, and other references to the Neferu dynasty. After several hours Sanat spoke up. The Nefru Dynast. Yes I believe we have multiple pieces including this name. Hearing this confirmation alone was pleasing. Good, then we may yet confirm mention of this artifact within their possession. I intoned. Quite, my lord. Sanit agreed. He called upon a host of scarabs to gather the reading material. To see swarms of scarabs handling, data scrolls, delicate papyrus scrolls, thick manuscripts, tomes, and other forms of the written media was unusual to see. Do you not have crypto thralls for this task Sanat? I asked with unease in my voice. No, I cannot say that I do. He started. I find their usage to be. Distasteful. That earned a chuckle. I suppose they may be seen that way. I agreed. Stepping toward the ever growing pile of reading materials, I began to dive into the reading material provided to me. My mind settled in on the task of disseminating whatever useful information this ceaseless stream of data scrolls could provide. Soon enough, Sanit joined me in this effort. Well into a week's worth of study we had outlined, a vague location of where the dynast's territories lay. Another three weeks gave us a list of several hundred worlds that belonged to them, only a handful of which I was aware of. Two months gave us a hypothetical schematic for a nullification array which was the right direction but a bit off the mark. 
In between these long weeks of reading through countless historical records on this dentist, Sanit and I opened a dialogue. Ishka, may I ask? I momentarily looked up from the scroll I had been reading over. You have a rather unique talent when it comes to uniting the existing blackstone of the fortresses with the dentist's own technology. Sanit replied. Lord Trazin spoke at length of his duration commanding one of the fortresses. I wish to see if perhaps you could divulge some of your wisdom on the matter. He stopped himself, as if to think further on the words. The technical functions of the combined systems have fascinated me, I admit. I couldn't help but stifle a laugh. I suppose I could do so Sanit. If you would be willing to show me more of the skills you've honed in extra dimensional spaces and pocket dimensions. Your area of study fascinates me. Sanit's vocal actuators rose in pitch. That is, very pleasing to hear Ashska. I would gladly exchange lessons with you. It is not often I may enjoy a discussion with another scholar. Sanit smiled. It would see us half a year before we found the first mention of the Dark Throne. Sanit was able to find it referenced within an Azurani manuscript. Loathsome as where it came from, it had what we were looking for. It spoke of an emerald moon that cuts waves half of an invasion force before the immortal enemy, which no doubt was us. Disappeared into a gate. After that opening salvo from the moon a contingent of Necron craft routed most every ship, save for a few escape craft. The colors flown by the Necron dynast seem to reference Nefru, but we couldn't be sure. It is far too often that much of the Empire shares the same generic coloring for their Necrodermis shells. It fits what I'm looking for, still. I need the location of the activator. I groaned. Sanit tried broaching me with something. Lord, could you not, forgive me for asking but. Divine where it is? I let out a grumble. No Sanit, I cannot. I know its location some 10 millions of years from now, but I need to know where it currently resides. I spat. There is so much to prepare for. All of it millions of years away, and we cannot become complacent. I rounded on the old cryptic, an uncomfortable closeness between us. I have seen the grimdark future that awaits us, and there is only war, Sanit. Sanit balked at my rather severe reaction to the question. I let out a pain sigh. Forgive me, my friend. I get off topic when it comes to my abilities. These depictions of what I have seen, I take them very seriously. My peace of mind has been robbed by things that have yet to come. Let us continue. I tried to dismiss my lapse in decorum, and thankfully Sanat turned a blind eye to my spat. We continued our search from the non in relative quiet. Sanit broke the silence some three years after. I have compiled a map of various worlds, which fill the criteria you have outlined. Clearing my vocal actuator after the years of disuse. I just managed to let out thank you, Sanit. I stepped over beside him, carefully navigating the piles of scrolls between us. What he had to show me had been a hard light projection of Neferu's territories. Very good. I blurted, already I was making dozens of picked captures and archiving them into my long term mnemonics. Sanit zooms in the projection. There's more, lord. Seeing these territories lay so far from our own Sanit starts. We did not intend to pay them a visit, but with references to the activator and the dark throne. I am certain I have pinpointed a potential 9 worlds which could house the activator. That was a good start, I mused. Thank you Sanit, this has been most enlightening. As my thanks I shall prepare a dense data scroll on the technical aspects of Noctolith and its integration with our own technology, it is all quite fascinating I can assure you. Sanit spoke up, a confusion in his voice. Noctolith, Lord? I sighed internally. Forgive me I meant Blackstone. I must be moving along Sanit, there are other matters that call to my attention. Should Lord Trazin arrive please do send notice. I simply must speak with him on these matters. Sanit nodded. Of course lord, and I return your thanks. Speaking with another scholar has been most refreshing. Somehow without reading his cortical aura I could tell he was amused. I concur Sanit, this has been fun. I agreed. With little other left to say, I returned to the infinity gate. And made the translation back to my own tomb world.
Once back upon the tomb world I quickly translated myself to a recent addition to the tomb. The prison cells. During the conflict with the Eldery fleets, many among their rank were captured. Much of them had been returned as an agreement of an armistice. And a portion was graciously donated to Trazin's galleries. But there had still been several dozen collected for my dynasty's own amusement. Nehabkor had prepared a stasis chamber for these living specimens. A collection of several dozen Eldery all chronorally locked in individual stasis pods. I produced another tesseract labyrinth, and began my march along the stasis pods. I was looking for a male specimen, but any specimen would do. Pilots, warriors, proto-aspex warriors, and even a pair of warlocks. I momentarily looked over the stasis field containing one of the pilots. And I was reminded of the Harlequin Solitaire, they were still alive. If barely. I had kept them in orbit, within a stasis chamber up in one of the fortresses. The Yielder no, that's not the right word for this era. The Azurani gods had begun meddling in the affairs of this era. The clown god is tampering with the natural course of time. Fe I suppose it's only in retaliation for what I have begun. And so I return my attention to the collected specimens. Finally having settled on one. A Bonasinger, one of average build, black hair, waxy complexion, and one captured in the midst of battle, similar in almost every way to the others. With the exception of one thing. This Bonasir carried a golden icon at his hip. An icon belonging to the Azurani god of the forge. Vol. I deposited the Vol marked Bonasinger into the labyrinth and stowed it away into my pocket. With my quarry in possession, I departed for my ship and made ready to leave the tomb world. For this next venture I would need no allies. I would still be within the system. But I would be traveling into one of the six fortresses, the unalerted fortresses. I picked the same fortress that I had done most of the work within and awaited the many hours it took to reach one of the many hangar bays. Awaiting me had been several of the fortress's many drones. Testing my abilities I reached out mentally to a cluster of the smallest drone swarms. I received a ping. Well more of a data packet from Zenrak. It's nice to hear feedback. I decided to read it while recording first class proxy command to the assailing droids. Well. Scrap me. Okay, look into the non-atmospheric overheating problem. I'm a bit sad he discovered that melee feature, but I am happy he approved of it. Creator I have got to look into fixing these problems. Hey maybe I should upgrade myself. Things to look into later. Also the test appears to be almost over. A solid week with no casualties after the first 4 days. I felt a link established, a pinprick sensation as each of the dozens of individual scarabs was marked onto my ocular feed. The alien glyphs lighting up an uncomfortable portion of vision. Blinking away the interface I gave the order for the drones to disperse. As to be expected the drones clinked down onto the floor of the hangar. Each of them disintegrating into the floor. All traces of their existence quickly vanished from my interface. Very good. The fortress, and by extensions all of its constructs still held me as its master while this thought form possessed my cognition. I called upon the first guardian drone I came upon as I began my venture into the fortress. A titan strode up to me chittering legs thumping hard against the floor. I am searching for a chamber. A pool of tar which holds a powerful psychic signature, it holds within something like the azure army. The drone twitched its head up and down, as if parodying a nod. Wordlessly the construct ran off. The baleful thumping of its tree-legged stalking reverberated down the myriad of halls. Insufferably, I followed after it. We ran for days on end, even with the fortress remaking the rooms in which we entered to its own design this was a lengthy journey. The traps, maglevs, and geographically improbable chamber simply sat inert whilst we surged on through. As if all were simply allowing us easy access in this one specific instance. I didn't complain as I was aware that the fortress own benign intelligence could just as easily turn on a whim if it chose. The intelligence was all too invasive, capable of reading my own thought engrams as though it was reading it off of a scroll. I quickly dispelled that line of thinking. That kind of thinking would land me into a stray trap. Better not dwell on that. We finally came to a halt. 
before us had been what must have been dozens of intertwined stairways all leading downwards. Like a series of tree roots all branching out in different directions. This section of the fortress had been unexplored and inaccessible during previous ventures. But now with this drone's assistance, this chamber was finally in reach. The familiar elegance of geometric perfection had been lost here, instead replaced by abstract wave shapes etched into the floor and ceiling of the chamber. It was a disorganized chaos. This didn't sit well with me and I cast Scree over the various stairways. I had been searching for something whose contents have plagued my mind in recent memory. After several breathless minutes I found the discrepancy I had been searching for. A sharp dip in temperature, it was subtle but I could see that one stairway had a faintly cooler temperature. Without a second thought I took the stairway. As had been written within the vaults of Obsidian Omnibus there was a significant drop in temperature. Soon enough sapphire and emerald light flashes began to flicker distantly below on the snaking path of the stairway. I felt the sensation of moving through a thick to like liquid begin to slow my progression. I was getting closer. The blood anvil was in reach now. After trudging for what felt like ages, the stairway came to an end. A rough shaped dome opened up before me, almost like some naturally occurring grotto. Dripping water coursed around the rough black stone ceiling, all surrounding a waterfall, feeding into a pool of a myriad of colors. Like oil in water, a kaleidoscope of hues blended and stretched in the pool. A subterranean waterfall. I quoted. Exactly as it was written. I whispered to myself. I began to work, calling forth the fortification cord. And worked to weave the available blackstone above the pool. Soon enough I had formed a collar above the pool. A secure holding contraction for what was to come next. I produced the labyrinth and released the Bonacina from stasis. In an instant the Eldery let out an anguish scream as his facilities suddenly flared to life. Not one give the knife feared cretins the chance to stabilize themselves. I gripped his neck and slammed him into the restraints. His neck was locked into the collar, and with some struggling I was able to force his arms into manacles behind his back. Pulling back I observed the scene I had created. A trapped elder suspended over the blood anvil. You will know no victory, Althruel has already claimed your doom. The elder spat in its owed some tongue. That gave me pause. Ulthruel had been a farseer killed by executioner Phileas during the battle aboard the fortress. She has been dead for some centuries now, Bonasinger, the conflict has already been concluded. I pointed out in the elder's tongue. Impossible. The elder began to trash about in his restraints, but no mortal meat could bend the durable element. With fiendish glee I spoke up cc your mewling knife feared one. You shouldn't concern yourself with that war any longer. Instead you should prepare yourself for your divine apotheosis. The elder became confused. I let out an amused chuckle. Of course allow me to explain. Below you sits the blood anvil. The elder awkwardly rocked in his collar trying to get a look at his surroundings. Relishing the irony, I quoted another verse of the talisman of all story. A place where a supplicant, if his heart is bold enough, could join his essence to Vols. And you, my dear supplicant, have been found worthy. Let us see then now, if Vol shall accept you. And then, if that god of the forge is willing to speak with one who is his equal. Gripping the collar I lowered the elder into the pool, slowly sinking him down to his chest. The Bonacina began to thrash around at first. Curses were spat my way as his body began to be submerged. The roiling swirl of the pool washed over his lower body like a tar. It hugged at his form, almost trying to rise higher than the resting position of the water. I submerged him to his nose, watching him struggle to keep his mouth closed. The tar flooded his mouth after a few uncomfortable minutes of him rasping for air. He choked when this happened. His body now convulsing with a fury he didn't have before. I clasped my hand onto his restrained collar, pulling him up. Still the prismatic pull clung to his form, like tar hanging from a beast. His eyes flickered with psychic resonance, embers of swirling witch light rising off of him. Preemptive to act I called forth a barrier between me and the seizing elder. I waited for some time as the elder thrashed there. After a time he did relent, his body calming. Peering over the barrier, I could see the elder seemed altered. He seemed to be brighter, 
a little radiance coming off of him. Temperatures in this room had also risen significantly, and were climbing upward. Daring to press the situation, I spoke. Do you hear me elder? Are you still the same Bonasina who fought within the walls of one of the talismans? The elder deigned to speak, opening its mouth once. And sooner closing it, flexing its mouth now. As if deciding what to say. At first it whispered. His voice was a deep cold and cracked whisper. I had always believed your kind did not bear souls. Instantly my body chilled several degrees. Between my joint servos I saw the cold icy growth of moisture condensing. I cycled up my own reactor, melting the unnatural occurrence. This had been just an inkling of Warpcraft, by far its most common of side effects. Still not enough to determine this was the real Vol, now hiding within the meat puppet I offered him. He spoke once more. Why have you come here cryptic? More importantly, how were you aware of this place? There had been a slight in its head. A look of curiosity to this thing. This I started. Blood Anvil as your kind will come to call it. I have read of its abilities. Within the depths of each fortress or talisman as your ilk refers to them. I knew of them for many years. Their way was obscured to me until recently. Facing down the manacled elder, I enjoyed the look of his helplessness. And I have called you here today for a symposium of sorts. The elder let out a low pain croak of a laugh. Why a dialogue Necron? The grim trace of a smile formed upon the elder's face. Oh perhaps you meant that I was to speak to this soul thing of yours? The probing buzz of static hummed over my tertiary subsystems. As if this possessed creature was reaching into my cortical network. I called upon the guardian drone in response. A single purple white beam of a superheated light flew within a breath's length of the Bonasina's eye. Threading between its mane of hair and ear. Immediately the elder pulled its mental tendrils from my mind. This dialogue can end abruptly, so I wouldn't waste your time with such unnecessary acts. I clarified. Noted. He intoned. With that disturbance ended I continued. You played a hand in the gothic war. This caused the elder to raise a bro. Gothic war? I cursed inwardly, but resolved to ignore the lapse in chronology. The war in which your kind came for the talisman. I saw the advance of your kind technology, aspects which you had previously not deployed. The jetpack and the jump generator, and another thing. He couldn't help but laugh. What of it? You expect us to sit back whilst your kind rise in the millions. There was annoyance in his voice. Snarling, I said I expect disappointment from your kind. And I expect you don't mess with the affairs of mortal men. Kane looks unfavorably on such meddlings. Isher and Kernus know much of this. The Elder's face contorted into a scowl. Rays of brilliant orange-white light seemed to seep from his many orifices. As if his fury at the mention of his fellow god was manifesting as a burning light within him. You will speak no more of them Cyclops. He said bitterly. I smiled internally. But there are things I must know. I spoke wryly. Do you know of Anaris? Once more the Elder seemed confused. Delightful. It seems this has yet to occur. Meaning there is work to be done for the both of us. Us? He asked in disgust. What possible delusions do you delude yourself in? I do not delude myself in anything. I spat back. I am seizing the opportunity to rid the galaxy of the Great Annihilator and the Great Devourer. I rounded upon the Elder. And perhaps your kind should concern yourself in your own matters before trying to meddle in mine. I will impart to you the future that lies for your kind of all. If you will terminate the aid you have been giving to Segarach. The Mask of Destiny should have never come into existence as it has. The Vol possessed elder seemed shocked. So you know if it's creation. Knowing its name as well, how, queer. You are not the same as your kind's diviner. Do not compare me to that third chronomancer. I said with barely venom. Do not compare me to any of the blasted Necron. Taking a breath I steadied myself. I have already shown foresight into many of your kind secrets. I see what the future lies for your race, the fall of your kind is a lengthy one. I called forth a projection from my ocular. You will witness a future I wish to avoid. It began slowly at first. Scenes of the craft world Bealtan, and its people. 
Great Sears and its many champions over the millennia. Farseer Matcha, Ranger Amalin Shadow Guide, the Emissary of Rain. He seemed entranced by the show of the various Exarchs and the sheer volume of Wraith Constructs. And slowly but surely, the swirling tides of Emmerich energies began to swell from its surface. He turned to me sharply. What is happening to this craft world? Looking at the destruction I spoke. A fracture in the great storm to come. The craft world shook as if in the throes of a mighty earthquake. High pillars split, cracked along their length, and toppled to crash amidst billowing clouds of dust into the domed forests below. The cataclysm that had brought into Bealtan was not a sudden shattering, like that of broken crystal. But rather an eruption followed by a rippling spread. Vol spoke in disbelief. Why show me the death of this craft world? Which world was this? I did not recognize its symbols, nor the warriors. There seemed to be a touch of grief to him. These were the children of Bealtan. Just one of the heirs your kind will leave behind. Inheritors of a kingdom of ruin, the march of extinction comes ever on and on. The vision blurred away from Bealtan. Slowly the sea of images moved to another craft world. Lowly guardian defenders clad in yellow armor, and blue helms fighting amidst a ruined craft world. Shuriken launches firing harmlessly against the bulwark of crimson demons. Twisted demon things and engines of gory destruction slaughtering the elder wholesale. They are rather resilient. I noted. Who are these yellow clad warriors cryptic? The images continued onto other scenes of war. Scenes of war the forces of each hive ship they repelled. These are images of Iandan, one of your more unfortunate children. While I continued speaking, images of cyclonic torpedoes besieging the world played out. Your kind cling to survival. They will be left with only three gods. Isha, Cain, and Segarat will remain when you and the rest of your pantheon will be eaten and fractured. Visions of orcs rampaging against the hundreds of wraith constructs. How can you know such things? Confusion plagued his expression. It is by the very will of the galaxy that I know what comes. I retorted. By the inexhaustible touch of the old ones have my perceptions been expanded. I awoke with the very knowledge of the doom that would befall us. Visions of the drukery cabals and twisted madness of their city of Kimura came into focus. If you do not heed the words I tell you. Forget the promise of progress and understanding for your people. I conjured forth the malign images of the swarms of chaos undivided upon the Cain's Gate. Falder based warp entities of the four great annihilators. Champion demons, exarchs of decay, trickery, slaughter, and excess all in union against the inheritors of Eldery Empire. For in the grim dark future there is only war. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Bell Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Vol strained his neck against the blackstone clasp. Cease this cyclops the god thing whispered. I will not see more of this future you have for my people. Now allow me to return to focus. Cease aiding the laughing god. The galaxy L needs the jester's Thedrix. Vol's expression twitched. Pangs of confusion and annoyance. Segarach's schemes have no place in this galaxy. Holoquin should never come to pass. He let out a cool breath, the warm orange glow of his body dimmed now to a chilling blue. Cyclops. You ask too much. My children, they will not stand down or be cowed down by this. I nodded in agreement. They are stubborn, it is not something so easily done. But I have great works to do. And it would be preferable to not come to blows. I cannot be merciful if we are to come to blows again. If the Elder do not step aside they will be crushed without mercy or remorse. He is fond of your kind. There was a measure of nobility he saw in your kind. The Wraith Host, the rank of Aspect Warriors, its Phoenix Lords. As we mused on that future, 
swimming visions of those champions of their dying elder ebbed and bled into my projections. We hadn't realized it at first. Nor had we noticed the subtle tendril of Vol's mental prob reaching to the thought form. He spoke whilst I was distracted in my visions. Seeing what's to come. It's all just. So much. My next. It will fail then. His words shunted warning runes across my visions. I became aware of his presence once more. I closed the distance and smashed my ormerite clad fist into the god thing's jaw. The collusion was instantaneous, but with heightened perception I witnessed his jaw break in gory detail. The impact against his chin broke skin and revealed bone in that first instance. Slow crunching cracks broke way along the length of jawline wrung out. His clenched teeth cracked and splintered in his mouth. The edge of his lip popped under such force. And the arterial spray of spittle mixed with blood slicked my rocketing fist. And then time continued along its normal passage. My rage quelled and his mouth in a state of ruin. I warned you against this elder. There will not be another warning. Your kind's fate lies upon a needle's edge. His jaw had been dislocated, broken even. A multicolored itch now spilling out from the depths of his mouth. It disgusted me. The snap of bone thrummed as his jaw corrected itself. Still ruined but his jaw sat where it was supposed to according to where it normally lay. A pained breath left him. G-H-M-M-N-I. I shall. Keep that in mind. He spit free a globble of spittle to the ground. I will do as you ask, however. I wish to speak with this. Monkey's soul which stirs within your depths. Humanity, this 42nd millennia, I swam through those visions for only a brief moment. I would speak to him for only a briefest of moments and I will call off Segarach and the others. Clenching my jaw, I considered these words. I was unsure I could even call upon him. I called upon the thought form, whispering its name throughout my engrams. I felt something bristle at the name. A small static buzz that hummed in recognition. This was... intriguing. But I didn't have the desire to be subsumed once more by this... human thing. I pulsed the name once more with further conviction. I tried to pull it forward into control of the tertiary mind. And then I lost control of the submind system in its entirety. The twitching of my fingers servos came. My vocal emitter spoke out of turn. We see Vol. The voice had been my own, but I recognized it as the human thought form, and so I allowed it to speak unabated. You have my ear all. The god thing's broken face formed that passed for a smile. Munkay, tell me. You are struggling against a million threats you cannot possibly hope to win against. It seems almost laughable. Yet you are undaunted by this task. You will never get to see the benefit of the works you do now. This thankless work you do will not save you with a cryptic. I see it plain as day you two will be consumed by the other go mad with age. Mortal minds of the Monkey were not meant to see a million years pass. We felt it in our bones, the locking of our joints. The seizing up of non-existent respiratory systems. The humming beat of a heart who has not pulsed in millions of years. Shut no that will not happen. We argued. We won't let it happen. United in thought both of us felt the coming tides of instability. He spoke again. I have seen what future humanity has in store for us. Even if fragmented I know a fraction of what is to come. The Neverborn will come for my people. But it can be prevented. Without your kind Monkey, we need only act differently. Twisted and smiling it began to laugh grimly. This could not be, why had we not prepared Imprick dampeners? This was unlike us to fall into the hands of the elder. No, we could fix this, we not only take a new approach. United we came to an agreement. Vol couldn't, and in fact shouldn't be allowed to share this knowledge. And so we would change the outcome of things. We recalled a story. During the war in heaven, Cain fought in glorious combat against the Setan known as Azagorod, the Nightbringer. The embodiment of death. When the Nightbringer was shattered, splinters of his necrodermis impaled the god. Forever tainting his form. And planting the aspect of the Reaper, the fear of death within the hearts of all Elder. A revelation came to us then. One made of desperation. Or insanity. Now resolute in our course of action. We buried our tail into the fortress floor. 
siphoning forth energy directly from the chamber, overheating our reactor whilst Vol continued to gloat. We had no mind to spare him any attention. Instead we brought forth the harp. And pressed our fingers to the accursed cords which heralded an apotheosis. In that moment Vol had finally pulled his attention away from his own placations. And bore witness to our transformation. When once we had been a cryptic of a fractured mind. We had ascended into the burning avatar of a stug god unchained to the laws of reality. We had been of one mind on the matter. And once our transformation had completed a clarity of mind and like any other came to us. Surging forward, we tackled the possessed elder puppet. We shattered the restraints which held him as we collided, undoing them as if they were nothing but sand against our force. Burning and still wreathed in the fire of our apotheosis. We dragged in the Vol thing into pool with us. The blood anvil had always been meant to add to the strength of all. His stamp upon the fortress had always been capable of growing stronger. For it had been the shard of himself. He had always been known to put himself into his work. And that had been quite literal in his case. So when we plunged in we felt him trying to dissolve us into his own being. This was not something so easily done. But still I felt it. He was eating into us, subsuming my molten necrodermis form into his own essence. Through bubbled speech it spoke. You submit yourself to us. Did you really find this fight for the galaxy useless? We heard its chuckle hum throughout our mind. So be it. You have offered yourself to us willingly so we shall make use of your knowledge. We could feel it. Our body being torn apart. Atom by atom. Writhing agony came to me. Nailing blows spiked into my mind and body. A wreathing caress of burning heat lapped over me. Thrumming ringing echoed into my ears, overloading my senses. And the sensation of my lungs filling with water. I was drowning in his being. He was suffusing himself into every aspect of my being. Vol was an ocean depth and I was steadily sinking. I felt my perception spread elsewhere however. This agony which I endured had its purposes. The self stretched onto other pools and other fortresses. It stretched into the wraithbone weapons touched by his hand. Slowly seeping into the cracks of Vol's works. The hearts of Eldari siege engines into the marrow of even titans. Agonizing minutes, hours, and finally days he tried to consume me. But for a fractal of a god to eat a much bigger shard was not so easy. For this pain which I had endured had completed its purpose. All too focused on consuming me he had not the capacity to speak to his children. And I had the entire fortress for whom I could siphon off energy from. Ever a growing myself as my psyche was splintered into all. And so I seized control. Wrenching myself up and away from the pool I emerged. And began to fight back. I began to suck up Vol's pool. For a hungering Cetan needed sustenance. Vol was confused, thinking himself capable of consuming a stug god had been folly onto itself. The fractured being that now lapped up the essence of the Eldery god. Had once been the mad eightfold size fractal of Tseranoga the Cetan known as the Outsider. My presence bore into Vol, soon he knew madness and despair. Agony came to him. Not since the days of the Gothic War had I been given the chance to feed. Gorging myself on the screaming god thing I delighted in its agonized wails. Beyond the horizon of my gullet he would not return. Savoriness and like any other I had relished upon flooded my tastabuds. The blood of an impossibly ancient god thing created by the old ones was being eaten by me. Distinct notes of its history formed a different taste upon my tongue. The mournful agony he felt for Isha, and Kernus was a tang of despair as bitterly sweet like the headiest wine. I relished each new passing memory that crossed into my stomach. The pride he felt in his mortal champions was the fruitiest note of joy. To drink in a soul was something wonderful unto itself. Greedily swallowing up the god formed a pool of the blood anvil began to dip and sink. And before long the pool had all but vanished. Not a drop of liquid was left, all that resided within had been the thrusting god of starlight. My vision was scattered across the stars. Across a thousand Eldery worlds. In hundreds of temples. In the eyes of those most sacred sons of all's chosen. And slowly my vision focused on that before me. In a way I had succeeded, having bled my consciousness across the entire breadth and length of the Eldery Empire. But there was more to do. 
All this raw warp stuff had been filling. But there were meals elsewhere. Shards of all which easily lie in my grasp. And so we descended upon each fortress. Delving into the deepest. One by one I found myself slurping down the shards of all at the heart of each fortress. Each of the blood anvils was left empty. And with each of their passing I felt brimming with new knowledge and memories. The chambers which contained him previously were collapsed. Every trace of the Eeldery was purged from the fortress. Never again would the Eeldery disgrace these halls with its presence. In the coming days following my feast, the Eeldery would fill a shiver in the warp. A slow reverberation as the taint of the outsider seeped throughout the galaxy. And Vol's many deaths rung out to the wider realm of the Elder Star Spanning Empire. Thousands of his faith had gone mad as they felt his death scream echo across the realm of souls. Hundreds more who wielded armaments blessed by his touch felt the same insanity. In the years to come those skilled seers and warlocks of Ashes Faithful would come to call this phenomenon. The aspect of the outsider. In the same fashion as the Nightbringer had infected Cain. I had infected Vol. What that had cost me I would not know for many years. But during those times I had little care for the happenings of my lesser aspects. I had quelled a hunger for which I never knew of. A starvation which one such as myself should have never known. With the capability to feed once more in mind. I turned my attention to the myriad of other morsels the galaxy has to offer. Quick facts. The cryptic has a heart that can transmute things into seat and necrotomis. Specifically the stuff the outsider was made of. This and another transmuting ability he has can functionally turn him into a setan for a short period if he has a power source to draw from. Very well. Said Zubica. It is decided then. Agreed Osoaria. Quelkan nodded with finality. After much deliberation. We of the Awakened Council find Lady Savrak Farak of the Votek Dynasty guilty. On the charges of violating the edicts of the Triarch. Ordering the eradication of the Tichnomenrite orders. Zubaka ever the snide one laughed openly at the declaration. Taking great amusement. While he still could. In the gravity those words would ordinarily bring. Osoaria continued on after Quelka. However. Given the complex nature of the information that has been provided between our recess. We will have to dismiss the case. Zubaka spoke with some frustration now. A hot up. And indeed 26 other cryptic have been seized. As has been brought to our by the defendant. Members of the Tichnomenrite conclaves of Magistrak are still in operation. And the Weep and Smith Danth has been apprehended by executioner Phileas. Finally Phileas broke her long silence. In exchange for the information you have provided on the Tichnomenrite cults. You shall be pardoned. But know now, that myriad engines wrought by the Tichnomenrites shall be seized by the Triarch. The Tichnomandrite now known as High Transmogrypha Reishka will be removed from your dynasty and will be entombed here upon Mandragora. Where he shall serve underneath the watchful eye of the Triarch and the Awakened Council. Easily I nodded at this. The better part of centuries of work, careful wording, and the accrued knowledge imparted by both the Cryptic and my own predecessors had paid off. The power of the Vokhlad would be diminished yes, but my survival had been ensured. My reign will continue. And all it cost was the lives of those other technophilic wretches that hid amongst the cryptex orders. Amazing what one could do with even a fraction of the foresight that the cryptex possessed. This court case had lasted quite a bothersome span of time. But even these losses could be forgiven. Shortly after the court of the awakened council had concluded. I Ferak Savarek of the Voklet will not go quietly into the annals of history. Too much has been sacrificed to simply let my dynasty fade from the galaxy. Ishka has already shown me the path to something great. And already I have a full cohort of my royal cohort. A batch of reawakened warriors from my legion. And the allies of the Hemanth dynasty to call upon. With these matters dealt with, the council will move on to the next engagement. Quelka continued. Osoaria nodded in agreement before turning to a rather bored looking tree arc. Execution of Phileas. Call upon the Triarch upon the Vokit's primary world. We shall reconvene once he is brought before us. Phileas silently left the room to contact her brethren. I had been unaware she had left any of her ilk upon my tomb world. With the matters of my continued existence now longer in question. 
I turned to the assembled host of members of my royal court and raised my arms up in satisfaction. I still reign supreme, no then. Vokat remains a brilliant gem in the eyes of our beloved empire. The assembled court broke into cheers and adulations. Words decrying the cryptic and other technom and rights born rang out. These men and women who served me knew well what words would please me after being frustrated by his annoyances. We shall return home the victors this day, these traitors will be rooted well before the arrival of the glorious Silent King. I could feel the scorn of the members of the Awakened Council boring into my back. No doubt they would harbor immense animosity but no longer could they claim to hold the blade of execution over my head. Likely jealous of my victory this day the council began to depart. How satisfying. For now I allowed the honeyed words of my admiring court to serenade my ears with my praises. These revenant moments did not last. In the coming hours Phileas would return to the room. An entire cohort of 50 other Praetorians at her heels. One of the more impudent members amongst my royal court vocalized worry for our own safety. Another voicing a need to escape. Phileas would disabuse us of this notion. Farrakh. The triarch has fallen quiet above the tombs. Any and all messages to our agents fall upon deaf ears. Attempts to reach the acting Farrakh have ended in failure. Reaching the Cryptex own fortresses has yielded no results. We will all be mobilizing for the tomb world. This silence is too anomalous to leave unchecked. It was after that grave declaration that the assembled triarch loaded us into the confines of their own Cairn class tomb ship. The executioner called upon the four martial nobles of my court. My nemesis, two overlords, and my own Viragud. Added to her retinue for this next operation. The uproar amongst me and my court was natural for such an event. This cavalier disregard of my station was noted keenly by my constituents. Executioner Phileas informed me thanks to the myriad of ancient edicts of the Silent King and the Triarch. That she was entirely in her right. And it was best I did not try to disrupt Triarch escapades. I relented. We arrived to my home system. The familiar glow of our star shining upon the myriad worlds of my domain came into sight. It gave me peace of mind to see a comforting scene once more. A peace that would in the hours to come be dashed. We hadn't noticed the problem immediately. Instead the massive discrepancy came to us when we passed the gas giant of the system. And one of my retainers asked a rather grim question. Had the fortresses not been parked by this one? That had rather gotten our attention. The court and I descended upon the windows, hoping to glimpse the fortresses. There was no world where the Triarch would have allowed the Cryptek to mobilize that number of star forts. Six mobile star bases missing. This was comparable to displacing an entire continent. It stretched any level of credulity. The rabble of my loyal court were in agreement. Whilst the court argued, I received an interstitial ping marked by the Triarch seal. Turning from the rest of the chaff, I answered the summons. Farak Savrak. Have you ordered the Cryptek to retreat? Phileas had accused me. Unthinkable. Directly calling into question me. Suppressing a wave of brimming anger I responded in a measured fashion. I can say with complete assurance, whatever is going is entirely of the Cryptek's own insidious doing. Phileas did not respond in any immediate fashion. And so I began to wonder. Where would the Cryptek go with all this firepower? Be executioner Phileas. Ishskar and his six fortresses had gone missing. Uncontested and without a report from the agents I put in place to watch him. This may have been a failing upon my part. Such a massive loss to the immortal empire. Ishskar had spoken of their uses often. The weapon to end entire solar systems. A weapon to surpass the celestial orrery. He said once. I rarely gave credence to the musing of cryptex. But the dire portents he gave. The proof of ruination he laid bare to us was beyond comparison. Orokan had ever been a thorn to any Hoosier he made a visit to. I should have dedicated further members of the Triarch to watch over the Cryptek and the Overlord. I banished these pointless thoughts, they would lead me nowhere. Instead I looked at the data collected from Farscree rituals and communication logs from the central tomb complex. In truth there had been some information we had received from that section of the tomb. We had not received any answers from the acting Farrakh. Nor hailings from the Triarch, or even a single Deathmark. 
Worst of all, the tomb's world mind could not give us any solitary piece of data on the condition of the central tomb chambers. But we could recover vid captures from lowly scarabs. Much of the vid feeds were corrupted with massive frame delays, artifacting, and blaringly low resolution of what my thrall datamancers could gather from the disgustingly unclear captures. It appeared that with the exception of the canoptic constructs, the central tomb chamber had been abandoned. The central chamber was left without a single necron denizen. I spearheaded the effort into the fortress. 50 triarch, and some four members of the Vuklitz command at my heel. I gave command of 10 of the triarch to each of the commanders and took 10 Praetorians with me into one of the many avenues leading into the central chamber. Marching into the inner depths of the tomb we made way for the last known location of the Triarch. The Great Amphitheater. The Nemeza with the 10 of my warriors was the first to relay any message to me. Translations to the central chambers has been frustrated. We will need to go by foot. He explained. Perhaps as a precaution by Overlord Nefert Akhina, I mused silently. This was a privilege granted to her as the Ferak. We pressed on regardless of the fact. Descending down the first four levels we found there were no immediate inhabitants. Entire rooms had been left devoid of any canoptic activity. The familiar blue glow of the wall's illumination seemed to fade or wink out. What great failure had occurred here to cause such a great disturbance here? Cursory scree yielded nothing but junk data reading off of the light anomaly. Junk data. Scraps of digital errors with no coherency to them was what was returned. I attempted to pulse a warning to the other groups. But only an oppressive static was returned. Blurts of audio gibberish which none of my translation networks could decipher. With the alternative being to make contact with each individual team. We were forced to press onwards. Only the clicking hum of our footfalls ringing out. For several leagues we marched. Soon enough darkness all but consumed us. There was to be no comfort in the familiar half-light of the tomb's illumination. A faint emerald shone from the tips of covenant rods wielded by my fellow Praetorians. My own relics either afforded us visibility for a short few meters. Flipping our oculars to scotopic vision, sections of the tomb came back into visibility. One of the triarch pinged an attention beacon across our interlinked interface systems. Dozens of ketaway there appeared to be a dip in the construction. Quickly approaching we noted a rending break along a section of the corridor's surface. Running along my digits across the meter long gash, my brethren analyzed the small section of structural damage. The wall was struck, this section cracked open by a powered weapon. On closer examination, molecular readings indicate dimensional shifting. I came to scan the damage myself. Structural damage in line with that of hyperface weaponry. Roughly done within the last decade. I noted. Quite a deadly edge. Amongst one of the larger patterns, one of the cryptech's own design. Forging forward we descended another level. There were three other great chambers before we were to reach the amphitheater. Progressing further we discovered the remains of several canoptic constructs. Disabled scarabs and various levels of ruin strewn along the length of a hall. Mark similar to the earlier hyperface destruction littered this hall. 26 swarms worth of scarabs, and two spiddlers my executioner. My brethren raised to me. Lifting a single scarb I observed the outwards damage. Its main power node cracked. Unusual. Further observations of the ruined spiders revealed they had been decimated by another powered belay weapon. These are most unusual. I hesitate to say it but it appears this was done by crude but powered claws. This sat unwell with me. This behavior, you suspect it to be the work of those afflicted with the flay of Iris? I asked. My brother hesitated before speaking. These are flensing claw work I have to admit. This behavior fits my executioner. I held my tongue. It wasn't out of the question, but with the exception of Cryptek's own new malady. We have yet to see any other signs of the virus. We pressed down another two levels. More destruction followed. Hundreds more swarms and canoptic constructs cultured the walkways. This wanton destruction frustrated me more than I could let on. Where had the Trioc been? The Praetorian stationed here should never have allowed this to happen. I was thankful to have not vocalized such a thought. As the first signs of what had occurred became clear. 
five warriors, one immortal, and five triok had been pulsed apart in the final chamber leading to the next floor. The warriors had been hewn apart by the work of the claws. Multiple torn apart together, their weapons ruptured in pieces. The immortal sickeningly enough showed signs that it had quite literally pulled apart. Missing Necrodermis half shifted out of reality shows that it had been denied reforging. Reanimation protocols had been delayed. Thesis bodies had been refused reanimation mid destruction. It can't be. The Tomb World Nodal Command has been violated. Translation, reanimation, and long range interstitial communication has been disabled. I roared. Overlord Nefert Akina, I will have your head for this. I raged. Hekmet, check on our fallen. See if you can access the dead's last recorded engrams. My brother nodded and looked upon the blast punctured forms of the five ruined triarch. Freeing the dead's triarch's head open he probed invasive digits into wiry triarch brain. The stream of data flowing into brother Hekmet's mind for processing. Quickly he retracted his fingers discarding the head. Shattered gods. He exclaimed. Calm yourself Hekmet, what did you see? I growled. The triach stumbled back a step before his composure took hold. Overlord Nefert has done this. An all pervasive silence filled the chamber. This was not possible. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Hekmet spoke once more. She has forbidden reanimation protocols, but their minds have still been queued for the forges. Our fallen brothers have been dead for a minimum of 9 years. Uh, corruption has taken over the acting Farak. Temporal dissonance, and... He looked at one of the gashes running along the seam of the floor panels. She has augmented herself. Fists bald, I uttered a question. In what way? She has grafted upon herself several artificer class patterns of weapon. A flensing claw, a hyperface harvester, a mimetic annihilator. And lastly she appears to be wielding a Taukiton arrow. Indignantly I slammed my bald fist against the wall of the chamber. A fractured explosion force broke into the wall as cracks ran a half meter along from the impact of my fist. My brother said nothing on this matter. Taking a moment to realign my frustration. She has perverted her own form. We deal with a new destroy class then. All thoughts of finding our fellow brethren were abandoned. Instead we headed to further levels. We strode atop the rubble of no less than 30 of fallen Triarch brothers and sisters as we made pace for the central command node. It was within the chambers leading to this chamber we had found the first signs of life. A singular scarab, damaged but still hovering. Halting our swift advance, I made the approach to the singular scarab. Holding a hand to the scarab I attempted to hold it, wishing to probe its mind. This was to be a mistake. The unfortunate reality sunk in as the scarab immediately began to attempt to disassemble one of my fingers. It was able to half sever my finger before I sent the impudent scarab crashing into the wall. The longer we stayed in this section of the tomb the more my anger rose. Hekmet. Probe the construct's directives and then shatter it. I was a thing of barely contained rage. Hekmet complied to my outrage and plunged his probing digit into the scarab's interface dock. I see, he whispered. It seems the overlord was going to burrow deep below the ground. She has given the order to reinforce the node. This was only after she obliterated an entire section of the tomb's canoptic. She must have been exceptionally deluded. Fractions of junk code seem to have carried over to some of these constructs as well it seems. We will have an obstacle of several hundred swarms before we reach the command node. Hekmet's words were true. We would discover that one third of the constructs we would encounter. Would refuse to yield to the override commands that Triok could impose. We would bring down uncounted thousands of swarms who attempted to destroy us. Hundreds of spitters, and dozens of the rare arachnthrides were immolated by the forces of our star slinging rots. In the end we had to collapse an entire subsection of the central tomb chamber. Hundreds of kilometers collapsed to simply avoid the issue of rebelling constructs. Our armor was bare, and eating away in dozens of intervals. This had not been a battle I relished in. In fact I would come to loathe every second of this conflict. This had been amongst the largest failures I had ever endured. As we had lost the fortress. Hundreds of brethren. And were fighting scrabs to take back a murderous holod's tomb. 
None of the Seraptic Heavy Constructs barred our entry to the command node. They were possessed of a Stelium mental capacity and had fired upon any of the Constructs that dared entry. Heckmut discovered with some questioning that these Constructs had been created by the Cryptic. In fact he recalled one of these Constructs during one of the Cryptic's earlier excursions back to the planet of the gun. With that final matter we came to undo her orders. The reanimation forges were brought back online. Translocation on the wider ranks was re-established. Interestingly enough it seemed only the Cryptic and the Overlord Nefert had been allowed to continue translation. Most interesting. Fire. Raging brightly. I had forgotten this sensation. It does not return to me all at once. Only the feeling of failure. Another blemish to my honor. How had I been elevated to any place of significance? Each plate of my frame popping into existence with a little ping of condensing matter. The forges have remade me once more. I remember everything now. The cryptex hidden den of knowledge. The corrupted ferroc. I had been slayed by that terrible tree stalking creature. And my cryptex called to me. I'm coming buddy. That was what he had said to me before the overcharging mythic annihilator punched into my chest and atomized me. To think Ishka could consider someone such as myself as a friend. It was unheard of, but he had always shown me a level of familiarity. I had considered him as a mentor. Early into his awakening he had shown me wonderful simulations of combat. Testing my abilities. Trying to hone my mind further than what was expected of me. Decades of naval and infantry training under the pretense of games. Always he seemed to be one step ahead of me in terms of the depth of knowledge. Even when he allowed me to win in these games, I always had the suspicion he was granting me the win. Seeing what more I could learn. Then there had been armaments he had crafted for me alone. Yet still I had failed him. I, a gak that first sight have failed once more Ashska. Those thoughts were quickly disrupted as my oculars once more were brought online. The execution of Phileas was standing before me, severely damaged. You will tell me everything that happened lich good. Was what she said upon my reanimation. A quick note from the author of the story. Well that's all for now folks. I plan on coming back in the future maybe after another month. There are at best another two threads left before I wrap up the story. I had a lot of fun with this one. But I do need a break from Necrons for a while. I think my next project is already in the works. I'm thinking of picking up in similar territories as Cup Anonymous. Something set in the Great Crusade. If in the coming weeks you see someone named Adept Anon that will be me. I've read almost all of the Horus Heresy at this point and have already devoured Valord, Birth of the Imperium. This next story won't be as long winded, believe me I'll learn from my mistakes here. I'd just like to have another boy with anxiety trying to make the Great Crusade go right. Oh and folks let me know what you thought of this thread, I'm all ears. I always do read the feedback, I kinda thrive on it. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.